I'm glad that you're here. I hope that you continue to find these videos to be of value. Uh, to do that, though, I think we need to center ourselves. Um, <clears throat> it's where our heart is that changes whatever words we say from whatever words we say into prayer, into meditation, into reflection, devotion, praise. Um, and uh, I think if we can fill our hearts with God's Spirit and, and leave little room for anything else, that is when we are connected and devoted to God. So center yourself. Center yourself in God's Spirit. Let fear and anxiety go as you breathe out and breathe in God's Spirit to fill your center. If you like a word as you breathe in and breathe out, let's go with the classic today. Love. Breathe in with love and breathe out with love. In that spirit, let us pray. You, O oh Lord, you are all we really want as we turn to your word in scripture. As we seek you in our hearts, as we pray for our hurts, needs, and gratitude, you are our all. Forgive us when we forget this, and then remind us gently. As we move into a time of devotion, move our devotion from one time to all time. Let us see you in each moment, and so save us from ourselves. Amen. Amen indeed. As a congregation, we light a peace candle every week. We light it for our own peace, for the peace of our community and nation, and for the world. Um, and I know that w at least one other person is lighting a peace candle at their home uh, as part of our time together, and I hope you're doing that as well. Let the words of this litany sink into that prayerful and delighted center. When there is peace in the heart, there is peace in the home. When there is peace in the home, there is peace in the community. When there is peace in the community, there is peace in the nation. When there is peace in the nation, there is peace in the world. May peace begin right now in each of our hearts. Peace be with you. In that peace, let us pray the Lord's Prayer together, saying, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against 
us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. People haven't been putting in a, a lot of prayer requests or spirit sightings, but we have a pretty cool one. Uh, we have, as many of you will know, um, prayed for um, Simo uh, Becca's husband, who was for a long time uh, in Tunisia, not able to get permit uh, and got not able to get a permit in a timely way. Uh, for the usual reasons, um, but he's now here in the United States with his family in Barrie, and that seems like a really great thing to celebrate. And so I invite you to celebrate it with praise and with prayers for this family that now once again um, is united and is going to have to figure out how to be together. And as most of us know, <laughs> that's not easy. Now, the scripture we have today is from Genesis. Uh, the last part of it starts in chapter 37 and ends in chapter 50. We're not reading all 13 chapters, uh, and there's a lot of stuff that happens in there that isn't being mentioned this morning. But it starts with uh, Jacob, also called Israel, uh, and it says, Now Israel loved Joseph more than any other of his children because he was the son of his old age. And Jacob had made him a long robe with sleeves. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peaceably to him. Once Joseph had a dream, and when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. He said to them, Listen to this dream that I dreamed. There we were, binding sheaves in the field. Suddenly, my sheaf rose and stood upright when your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheaf. His brothers said to him, Are you indeed to reign over us? 
Are you indeed to have dominion over us? So they hated him even more because of his dreams and his words. After time, Joseph went after his brothers and found them at Dothan. They saw him at a distance, and before he came near to them, they conspired to kill him. They said to one another, Here comes this dreamer. Come now, let us kill him and throw him into one of the pits. Then we shall say that a wild animal has devoured him, and we shall see what will become of his dreams. But when Reuben heard it, he tried to deliver Joseph and said, Let us not take his life. Reuben said to them, Shed no blood, throw him into this pit here in the wilderness, but lay no hand on him. That way he might rescue Joseph out of their hands and restore him to his father. Then Judah said to his brothers, What profit is it? if we kill our brother and conceal his blood. Come, let us sell him to the Ishmaelites and not lay our hands on him, for he is our brother, our, our own flesh. And his brothers agreed. When some Midianite traders passed by, they drew Joseph up, lifting him up out of the pit, and they sold him to the Ishmaelites for 20 pieces of silver. And they took Joseph to Egypt. When Reuben returned to the pit and saw that Joseph was not in the pit, he tore his clothes. He returned to his brothers and said, The boy is gone. And I, where can I turn? Then they took Joseph's robe, slaughtered a goat, and dipped the robe in the blood. They had the long robe with sleeves taken to their father, and they said, This we have found. See now whether it is your son's robe or, or not. Jacob recognized it and said, It is my son's robe. A wild animal has devoured him. Joseph is without doubt torn to pieces. And then Jacob tore his garments and put sackcloth on his loins and mourned for his son many days. Sometime into the future, 13 chapters, we pick up the end of the story. Uh, it should be noted that everybody is now in Egypt, where um, Joseph is the um, vice pharaoh, if you will. Very powerful. Realizing that their father Jacob was dead, Joseph's brothers said, What if Joseph still bears a grudge against us and pays us back in full? for all the wrong we did to him. So they approached Joseph, saying, your, your, your father gave this instruction before he died. Say to Joseph, I beg you, forgive the crime of your brothers and the wrong they did in harming you. Now, Therefore, please forgive the crime of the servants of the God of your father. Joseph wept when they spoke to him. Then his brothers also wept, fell down before him, and said to Joseph, 
we are here as your slaves. But Joseph said to them, do, do not be afraid. Am I in the place of God? Even though you intended to do harm to me, God intended it for good in order to preserve a numerous people as he is doing today. So have no fear. I myself will provide for you and your little ones. In this way, he reassured them, speaking kindly to them. That ends the scripture. This story that we have in the lectionary starts off with love. Jacob, Israel, loves Joseph more than others. But uh, something to think about is that it begins with, with love. Um, and that love goes wrong. Um, it doesn't go well. Um, and what we have is a family divided, brothers divided, um, separate from each other, and indeed from their father in, in, in many ways. And because these 12 brothers are uh, the 12 tribes of Israel, the, the, the nation of Israel, that nation of Israel promised to be a nation of many, many people. Um, this division is is really uh, important. It 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 shows that things are broken, um, and because the you know the, the nation doesn't look like it's going to have a future, which is why this particular passage in the lectionary is really important for us today uh, because um, I, I think uh, I think it describes what we have what we are living um, a, a division uh, amongst brothers and nation um, that is dangerous um, dangerous both for individuals and for the nation we have a level of division that is pretty much or nearly at civil, civil war levels. We, we're not at peace as a nation. We're not at peace individually. Um, we, we're not at peace in the world, in our communities, in our homes, in our own hearts. And that should scare us. Um, as a nation, we're divided. Um, we have red and blue. Um, and some say not enough white. Um, you know, our community is, is divided and uh, in danger. Because of that division, we no longer want to really get to know people because we might find that they have the opposing color in their heart. And that, that makes it hard to care. It, hard, it makes it hard to have that Vermont tradition of, of reaching out and support and care for, for neighbor. Um, you know, we're not at peace. And, and even in our homes, for four years, we all know this, for four years, families have had a hard time gathering for Thanksgiving, Christmas, reunions, weddings, funerals, because you can't talk about the political and partisan divisions in our nation. And those in our nation have become those divisions in our homes. And, um, and in our hearts, we are not at peace. We um, have anger 
over the way things are. Um, we have despair that they'll never be able to change. And indeed, our hearts have, have been turned to stone. Um, our stone hearts are stone because we just assume we're right, like Pharaoh looking at the fleeing um, slaves. No, I'm right, and they should do what I tell them to do. Um, and um, he, won't, he won't let change happen. Um, and, um, and because the stone heart says, you're right, and everybody else is wrong, we, because there's no peace in our heart, we actually go even farther. Um, we say, not only are they wrong, they're very wrong. Um, not only are they very wrong, they're stupid. Um, they're corrupt. Uh, they're, they're either fascist or socialist, depending on what color you relate to. Um, we do not have peace in our hearts, and we end up treating people like shit. Or let's use the more biblical phrase. So uh, they hated them even more because of the dreams and the words and could not speak peaceably to them. Granted, okay, maybe that's not your problem. Uh, maybe you are at peace in your heart and in your home and community and nation. Congratulations. Um, and if you are, let me know. We'll have you preach. Because I know in my heart, uh, I, I am constantly struggling with uh, all of these things that the brothers are struggling with. And um, I mean, I struggle not to hate. I, I struggle um, with anger, um, anger at the lack of connection to any of the tenets of our faith in, in people's lust for power and the use of our flag and our Bible as stage props used to lie. I despair. I fight the despair. Uh, some days I despair um, that nothing will ever change. And, and at some point, we're going to melt down the Statue of Liberty and, and the Statue of Justice, um, melt them down for bullets, melted down with the, the heat of hatred, um, like civility and hope and, and even our own democracy. This is why the lectionary reading we have today is so very important. Uh, because it shows this same level or, and, and potential for division um, and leaving the faith, leaving everything behind. Um, uh, it shows the willingness to murder um, to betray. Um, and even amongst the betrayers, um, you know, Reuben wants to betray the betrayers, but by, um, by trying to save Joseph in a roundabout way. Not by saying to his brothers, look, no, this is wrong. I'm not, I'm not voting for this. He tries to work around them. Um, and, of course, there's, there's the other one who says, hey, you know, why should we just murder him? We could make money. All right. So this story is important because it, I think, shows us where we are and who we are. And we may not like it, um, but we're going to have to deal with it. Um, we have to re realize that um, this divided family is a divided nation. And it is God who brings redemption to the brothers and thus to the nation. 
More than that, God also redeems the promise that God made first to Abram, um, carried on to Abraham and to Isaac and to Jacob called Israel that is then passed on to these 12 sons. The promise was that they would be a numerous people, a mighty nation, and that can't happen with the way things are at the start of this story. But it is God who brings about redemption. It is God who brings about the redemption of that promise by making sure that they do not die of hunger, of famine, um, of starvation. Uh, and in that, God is redeeming not just a nation, but also a family some brothers. Uh, small and large, God is working and achieving redemption. Um, this is my God. This is my God that I look to and pray to, uh, the one who will care about, um, well, you know, um, a bird, um, a flower, uh, a sparrow, um, some brothers, who aren't getting along, um, as well as caring about the promises that God has made to humanity. That's my God, I, and I pray that it's your God. But, note, to get to that redemption, um, after the betrayal of Joseph, uh, the betrayal of Reuben, um, and after that, there are 13 chapters of real pain, uh, real desperation, um, uh, deprivation, and fear, both sides. I mean, Joseph has to fear for his life as a slave um, and as a prisoner. Um, and the, um, the brothers still in the promised land uh, have to uh, uh, have deprivation and fear of starvation. Um, there's pain. There's hard choices that have to be made. And, of course, there's some guilt that uh, sort of bounces around them as, as well. And, and then, as part of the redemption, there are tears. First Joseph, then the brothers. Tears for what was, for what was lost, for what, for what is and what they had to go through to get to where they are in this sense of being redeemed. Um, there are tears for what was done and undone on both sides. And it's only through all of that um, pain and all those tears that there is forgiveness. It's through all of that that there is redemption. Redemption and forgiveness are, are not easy things to achieve. They're hard. And so if your God is my God, the God who will care about a family of, a, of some brothers who are not getting along, who hate each other, and for promises made. If, if that's your God, then please note. And note also, note also, that the dream that the brothers so hated was true. It was God giving them encouragement. It, the dreamer was right. Those other sheaths of the brothers did 
bow down to the lifted up sheaf of Joseph. Um, the dreamer was right in that Joseph is not God, cannot stand in the place of God in terms of judgment and revenge. Um, the, the dreamer does show the way of God, both with dreams and with his final words. The dreamer is right that God can unite. And because of that, the brothers do form a nation, a nation of 12 tribes. Uh, the dreamer was right, both in the dream and in his words. And it needs to be said that the dreamer was right, whether that dreamer was Joseph or Martin Luther King Jr. A story of redemption. Perfect for our times. Amen. Let us be together in the spirit of prayer. Lord, holy, holy, holy is your name. And we sing it with honor and praise. You and you alone are our God and Lord. The stars spin over our heads in a slow and somber way. And the earth spins without us even noticing. And sometimes our lives feel like they spin. And we have no way to stop the spinning. There is a buzzing whir of confusion around us, and we lose track of what we should pay attention to. Our eyes try to watch the whirring, our feet try to race the sun, and we become dizzy with all the movement. And none of the movement feels like it is moving us forward. So in desperation, we grab what looks like control only to find we have given control to another demand. Mighty one, we are exhausted with 2020. Jobs seem tentative, if not for us, then for loved ones. Health and retirement seem at risk. Traditions of care and support are eaten by power gluttons. Civility is treated like an old-fashioned way for losers who will not use name-calling and innuendo to cut down opponents. A person's word is trustworthy for as long as it gives the person an advantage. This year can feel like hell's roller coaster that we cannot get off. We mean to complain, Lord. Where else can we seek for the calm we need and want? Where else might we find the peace of a single candle lit to defy the darkness? Only in you will we feel wrapped in a warm blanket and held safely. Only in you do we dare let our guard down. When the striving for power, control, and understanding makes us dizzy and nauseous, we can rest in your warm embrace. We know that even when we cannot improve our faith, that you stand ready to hold us until everything stops moving and shouting and nibbling at our souls. With you, we have peace in the promise of an eternal home. 
With you, we have hope because you always seem to bend the trajectory of life towards something holy. In you, there is the strength to forgive our fears, sins, and mistakes before setting us again on the right roads. In you, we have all we need. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Amen. So in gratitude and in awe, walk the ways of life pioneered by Jesus. Remember always that when you stray or even refuse to move, that the Lord, your God, still loves you unconditionally, just as you are, in all of your power and magnificence. Amen. <laughs>